Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Welcome to worship on Maundy Thursday. This was Jesus' last night with his disciples before being betrayed, arrested, and crucified. We observe this night by remembering the things that Jesus taught them and shared with them. Maundy Thursday gets its name from the Latin word mandatum, which means mandate or commandment. This mandate refers to the new commandment that Jesus gives to his disciples, to love one another. That is what this night is all about. Jesus showing us what it looks like to give ourselves in love to God and to each other. And so as the world tried to extinguish the light of Christ, what we see tonight is that even in the darkest moments of betrayal and suffering and death, the love of of Christ still shines among us. And we can shine the light of Christ's love into the darkness around us. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us. Please join with me in our call to worship. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Lord, we gather tonight to tell your story and hear your promise, to remember and to do in remembrance, to celebrate with bread and cup the sacrifice that you made for us with body and blood. By remembering the events of this ancient night, may we find our place in this story. May what Jesus did 2,000 years ago teach us something about how to live in love today. All of this, Lord, we do in remembrance of who you are and what you did through Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us come before God with our unison prayer of confession. Please pray with me. Lord, on this night Judas betrayed you for 30 pieces of silver. Forgive me for all the times I've done it for free. On this night Peter denied you three times. Forgive me for the ways that I do it every day. Amen. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, he got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, "'Lord, are you going to wash my feet?' He said, I, you do not know now that what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, Lord, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet and had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. 
for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Jesus said, little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another.
While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Almost 2,000 years ago tonight, Jesus gathered at table with his disciples to share one last Passover meal. It was there that he took bread and blessed it, saying, Baruch atah Chamotzi lechem min haaretz, amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, amen. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and blessed it, saying, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Horei Pari Hagafen Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. He gave it to his disciples and said, The cup is the new covenant, God's new promise to you, sealed in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of your sin. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. With thanksgiving, let us give to God our grateful praise. Let us pray. Gracious God, in dying you destroyed our death, and in rising you restored our life. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ, with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands, bound to Christ. Set us free for joyful obedience and glad service, as Jesus gave his life for ours. Help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistent courage. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when, with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ's body broken for you. Christ's blood shed for you. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Holy God, source and sovereign, you put all power and authority into the hands of Christ, Christ who washes our feet in humble service. Teach us to love one another as, as Christ has loved us, so that everyone will know that we are his disciples. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Each year at the end of our Maundy Thursday service, we strip the sanctuary of its color to reflect the spiritual darkness of this night. We also leave the sanctuary and process to the memorial garden where worship concludes. Now at this point in the video, you have an option. You may continue watching the video and participate in the memorial garden portion virtually, or when I leave the sanctuary, you may stop the video come up to the church at 7 o'clock and join us in the Memorial Garden as we conclude worship in person. Now, as we strip the sanctuary of its color, let us join together in singing, Jesus, Remember Me. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, 
Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. There is no blessing tonight. There is no good news. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. God is dead, and we have killed him. Thank mm-hmm. you.